welcome to another video. Today we're looking at the realistic TR882 8 track recorder, which we picked up at a garage sale for 20 bucks. You just shove it in. Yeah, 8 track. Hey, what's going on, Dad? Well, 8 track is an endless loop tape with four different programs. Uh, this was a deck sold by Radio Shack from 1975 to 1978. Hey, look what it said. It said something down there. Yeah. And it was kind of a mid-range deck. It wasn't the nicest one they offered. Uh, in 1979, they had a really nice if one with Dolby. If you want to see these Radio Shack catalogs, go to RadioShackCatalogs.com. Okay. Anyway, uh, you know, I bought this knowing that I needed to get some tapes also, and I could probably make my money back. But anyway... Guys, we're having a thunderstorm here. Okay. Well, yeah, there's a lot of different tapes. I was looking for a set of tapes that had, you know, a blank tape and, uh, you know, some pre record tapes. tapes. Yeah, so I ended up getting 11 tapes for $11, including shipment, shipping. 11, 11. Yeah. And uh, these ones on the left are pre-recorded. They had dust covers on. Those One were, is fake. Those were in the best. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a minute. The middle ones were okay. Those on the right are kind of, like, bad. I'm not, they're not unusable due to bad pressure pads or eating up tape. This one we're going to talk about a little later. This I thought would be a nice mixtape, but it turned out to be a bad case of false advertising. False. <laughs> But anyway, uh, or false. it also came with this false. double header, which is kind of unique. It's a double header, not like the baseball kind, but it's a head cleaner. But it looks pretty worn out. I'm not going to use that. Actually, uh, first thing I had to do was repair the deck because it wasn't working. This uh, belt was pretty much baked on there. Looked like you know this thing maybe was in somebody's garage or attic for 20 years. So I had to peel that off. And I, yeah, I just happened to have another belt that looked like it would fit in my parts drawer, so I stuck that in there. And uh, once I put that in there, uh, the drawer, uh, I mean, the, once I put that, that in there, the uh, motor uh, turned just fine. And uh, when you push the tape in, the switch gets oh, pulled. Oh, Dad, you put your finger in there? There might be oil and grease and a spider that will bite you. Oh, well, it's okay. It didn't get bitten. And so I thought I was ready to go, so I stuck this tape in, and look, it plays. Love that thing. Unfortunately, we seem to be stuck on a track. We're stuck on Huey Lewis. And so, the way this works is the head is supposed to move up and down to go to different tracks. And you can see I can kind of... Why do Elmer's in the background? I don't know. I can kind of force it with my finger here. I know there's something going on when the tape doesn't work right. Well, I'll try a different tape. Yeah. So, anyway, I decided to try a different tape just to make sure it wasn't tape specific. This is another tape. I have same problem. Maybe the problem is the machine? Yeah. I get you know. You know. I also see those lights dimming out when I change tracks and maybe a power supply problem or a capacitor, but... Or maybe you're shaking it. No, I think it's just... I don't know. You shake the tape when that happens. Yeah. Anyway, I can... Maybe you just get to shove it in there. Yeah. Like in records, you have to carefully put them in. Yeah. Well, you have to shove this one. Yeah, this is just a different... It's a cartridge system. Yeah, it's kind of hard to get out, too, because you have to hold it or it just pulls the tape deck right off. But this was used in people's cars before they had tapes. Here's the problem. You can see every time it clicks tracks, that little gear is supposed to push those pins up and down, but you can see in the video, they're not moving at all. They're stuck. Whoa, that's so bad. The grease just was hardened. So here's the, this piece of metal here is holding the flywheel in. That little kind of silver cup is the bottom of the flywheel. So I have to remove the flywheel. Yeah, is that glue right there? I don't know. You have to take this pin out. You'll hear the flywheel drop out once you get this pin out. There's a little dab of glue on, on that thing. Watch it. Yeah. So there's another video that kind of told me about taking it apart. I'll put a link to. But once you take that pin out, you can just pull the flywheel out the top. Whoa. And once the flywheel's out, you can access the head mechanism underneath. From that point... Put a screw and put it on the top? Well, yeah. yeah. Well, that thing just snaps yeah, out. I, See, I, now I, it's working. I've put a bunch of grease on there. Dad, I've got it free. I've up. seen those before. What, capacitors? Yeah. Yeah, I've seen those before in our other machines. If you look back in one of our vehicles... Video. videos we saw the, one of those yeah anyway so as you can see here it's working it's moving up and down there's all the head wires that little pin right there sure one's tall, one's the pin tall. underneath was completely frozen i just had to pull it out and grease it maybe it got cold in their attic so now you can see it changes it tracks was a stylish congregation you can see they've been around and they had the biggest i was born a country girl <laughs> All right, so why did I do this? Well, 8-tracks, to me, represented all that was bad with the, 
Watergate with a disco bad fan. Yeah, I had no respect for this format, so I thought, why not try it? And one of two things could happen. I could turn into one of these type of super fans. Awesome. Yes. This uh, lady is part of a hour and a half documentary. I'll put a link below about how great A tracks are. So there's a believe it or not, there's a documentary on YouTube dedicated to people who love A tracks. Or I could just continue and continue to have no respect for this format. But the reality is, at the end of this, I see what you're, they're, they're, yeah, I can kind of see what they were going for. All right, but let's first of all do a playback test. As I suspected, the tapes that looked the nicest were the ones that sounded the nicest. Here's the Almond Brothers. Here you get to kind of hear a very well done transition. It clicks over from one track to the other. There's, you definitely can, even over the speakers I'm taping this, you can probably hear some dropouts and wow and flutter. called Supergroups Volume 3 and I thought it would be a nice variety of music to listen to on the 8-track. It has a bunch of different hits from the 70s. Hope you don't bust your ears out. Well, you know, it looks like hits as done by the original artist, but then you flip it over and it says simulated by the Odyssey group. What that really means Odious. is... Odyssey. Odyssey group. So it's not the original artist. It's what? as done by the original artist, whatever that means. So it, I'm going to simulate some reviews of this piece of trash right now. How about that? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's do it like the 8-bit guy did. Let's run her over with the steamroller. Yeah. do we're going to try recording a few things onto one of these blank tapes and just see how it sounds and uh, uh, the fidelity and all that kind of stuff so uh, here goes yeah and it's interesting too on this deck the way you do a recording if the tapes in you can't actually flip over to recording I guess that's to help you prevent prevent you from erasing your pre-recorded tapes so I tried all sorts of different things like pause record it didn't work so what you have to do with this particular deck is you have to hold down the recording button uh, hold down the record button while you're putting the tape in, I usually uh, pause it first, hold down the record button, put the tape in, and then you can get your level set and all that, and then you just hit the pause button and it'll, it'll start recording. So at this point I'm recording. So uh, let's just try some uh, recordings. I've got some free YouTube audio tracks. We'll just do some A-B switching and some testing here and see what's up.
record what they call recording blind because you don't know when it's going to switch tracks. Here's what that would sound like without the big clunk. I'm not about to go out and buy a bunch of 8-tracks, but I would say that I can see what they're going for. And, well, if you're in a car, this, this is kind of parallel to changing stations in a car. You can change tracks. You know, you can't really control anything else. And maybe whoever's designing this thought that would be acceptable. But uh, I, I was raised with cassette tapes. You can see the tape, you can fast forward, you can rewind. I'd say by, you know, obviously tapes won out and modern tapes sound better. This may have sounded better than the original tapes. But anyway, that's about it. Thanks for watching. Subscribe. All right. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.